I'm Shayna. I love dogs, I trip a lot, and I happen to have a knack for making pretty sweet videos for businesses. But the more videos we made, the more questions I got about how video and other content can be leveraged to make a bigger impact in their marketing. I mean, 44% of marketers say that producing content is their biggest challenge, yet content marketing is 62% less expensive than outbound and produces three times more leads. Now, I know a lot, but I certainly don't know it all. So I made it my mission to talk with content kings, queens, and bosses to learn as much as I could about crushing content marketing, and I'm taking you along with me. Welcome to the Content Coalition. Hello, Content Coalition, Shana here. I am here with the CEO of Yoast. My mind is blown, Marika. I can't even, like, we tried to go through this whole how to pronounce your last name thing, and I'm just going to butcher it. So I'm going to let her go ahead and do the full name. Go ahead. Yeah, my name is Marika van der Rakt. Yeah, yes. so now you all know why I didn't even try. So, <laughs> but it's Dutch, that's hard, yes. It's super Dutch. Um, so she is the CEO of Yoast. Um, she educates, she was um, a teacher and a researcher at multiple universities. We're going to chat with her about SEO, kind of about how she got started with Yoast, because if anybody's a WordPress person, we all know Yoast, or at least you should, and if you don't, then listen, continue to listen to this podcast episode. So um, Rika, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. I'm really excited yeah. to chat with you today. Yeah, I'm really excited too. Great to be here. Awesome. Yeah. First of all, like, you, how long ago did you start Yoast? Tell me your Yoast journey, how this all came to be. Well, actually, my, my husband started Yoast. Okay. So, yeah, so this is a great story. Um, his name is Yoast. And uh, he started Yoast, I think, 10 years ago. And he started it. And then I still was a teacher and a, and a researcher at the university. And he started because he was an SEO, so he was an SEO consultant, and he was doing SEO in, in big companies like uh, eBay and Disney and these kinds of companies. Yeah. And he figured out that the things he was, um, well, advising them to do, he could also do that in a plugin for WordPress, which he was already fanboy of. So then he built a plugin, yeah, well, making sure that people were were able to do this exact same things that he was proposing to these really big companies. And then it took a while before that plugin, it, it was free, so he didn't make a lot of money for a long time. <laughs> and he was doing a lot of site reviews as well, so, so checking other people's sites, seeing what they were doing wrong and right. And then I think I joined the company six years ago, and then it was shortly after that we uh, um, launched our premium plugin. And that's when it started rolling. Yeah. But for a long time, it didn't make any money. Or, it was just but now we have a, a hundred employees. So now we're doing rather well. You're doing okay. Yeah. So yes. what is the difference? Because you still have the free plugin and then you've got the premier yes. one. You're saying, what's the difference between the two? Well, first of all, we can't give support to 9 million people <laughs> because that's <laughs> impossible. So you get support <laughs> if you buy the premium one. And uh, we have a redirect manager and we have some... Uh, um, morphology recognition so if you want to optimize your text for a specific word our premium plugin will also um, uh, recognize other word forms like a plural or another like past tense or stuff so that makes it a lot easier and then we have some other stuff which are rather small and the internal linking feature of course yeah. so it's obviously you get more you get bang for the buck whenever you yes. sign up if you're going to go the free route it's like We'll do what we do, but you're kind of on your own, which is still an amazing give in the first place. Like I've been using Yoast for year, probably almost since, I'll bet seven years, probably since before you were <laughs> working there. <laughs> so that's awesome. Okay, cool. So how about, let's just start with something super simple. Can you debunk any myths that people believe about SEO? Is there anything that you hear constantly that you're like, that's not accurate? And let's hit those. Well, it's not easy and it's not quick. And you can't buy it and, and make it like magically appear number one. So whenever you see those ads that say, um, I will make you and rank number one, uh, that's not true. So it's not easy. It takes a lot of time. You, it doesn't necessarily take a lot of money. Of course, you need a decent website and some good hosting, but you don't have to be like a really big brand or, or spend a lot of money to do good SEO. You don't have to be a technical person per se. It does help a little bit, but if you have our plugin and you are a good content writer, you could be a good SEO as well. But I think the number one myth is that I see those ads 
promising you to rank number one and nobody ever is going to promise. We never write ranking number one. We hardly ever write ranking higher. We usually say outrank your competition maybe, but it's really hard sure. to, to promise something because you just don't know. Yeah, and that's that's what's so interesting is it, with content in general and SEO, obviously, like it just takes time and work. Like yeah. you just have to keep at it. And I think people just want this one quick snap of a finger, even if they have to pay for it way to rank and for their content to convert and all this stuff. But it's just, it's not the case. No, no. I wish it was, but it is. <laughs> Me no, too. It really isn't. So people actually, I, I think some people expect that just by installing our plugin they will magically rank number one and it will do something for you because if you install it we will take care of some stuff so it, it could lead to a higher instant higher ranking or at least a couple of days but usually it takes a lot of work yeah, <laughs> yeah. so it will so, help you but there's no quick fix there there isn't and so for for the folks at home who don't know exactly what Yoast does. Let's kind of break down, like, let's just start with the free version. So let's say you've got your WordPress site, you have a blog. Why would they install Yoast as a plugin? And what does that do to help them? Because it's obviously not some magical plug, no. you, you know, plug in and all of a sudden you're ranking. So how does it work? Uh, WordPress, uh, so we have a WordPress plugin. We also have a plugin for different platforms, but there are very little people using that because WordPress is lar the largest platform. So. So if you, WordPress out of the box is SEO friendly as it is. So it's already will have a higher chance for ranking than if you use another platform. But then there are some things that um, aren't made entirely the way you would want them to be built. And Yoast SEO will take care of them instantly. So you don't have to do anything. You can just go through our configuration widget, but a lot of things will be already taken care of. And then we will help you write your content in a way that the search engines will like it more. And I think that's the thing that will, most people will see of our plugin. That's our, our SEO analysis and our readability analysis. So our SEO analysis will, we will ask you to fill out the word you want to rank for. And then we will help you to write a text that is optimized for that word. And we will also make sure that the text you write is also very readable so that it will be easy for people to read. And then we have some features that will help you with your internal linking, which is really important as well. So with internal linking, can you break that down just a little bit for us? Yeah. So <clears throat> Google follows links. So Google crawls the internet the entire day. And when it, follow, when it finds content, it will save it in the database, the index. It's called the index. And so you should think of Google as a little spider that crawls through your website. And if you have a lot of links pointing towards a certain page, that little spider will come by very often. And then Google will probably think, oh, I'm here again. So this will be an important page. And I think that's the way you should use internal linking. Think about which pages on my website are the most important and make sure that Google will come around very often. So make sure that you, put links to your pages that you find the most important. And that's the way internal linking pretty much works. So yeah. doing, cause we talked with another, we talked with WP buffs um, with Joe over there and he was talking about having other links from other businesses come to your company, but yeah. you can create those links within your own website so that you are the, the internal linking piece brings more attention to Google. So there's something you can actually do yourself. Yeah. You can start today. Yeah. Yeah. So of <laughs> course, Links from other and 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 probably the the high authority authority that's a hard word in English uh, domains are the most important. So if you have some links from universities, that will really help with your ranking. But within your site, you can decide which pages you want to rank highest with, and that that's something very actionable, something you can do. And we have a, a feature that will help you just make that a little bit more easy. Yeah, because it's a lot of work as well, because you have to think about, which, because you just can't put random links in there. You should put links in there that actually make sense. So that, that can be a little bit of work. Just, you know, make sure that they're, they make sense in the page. Like for us within certain blog posts, we'll be like, oh, we mentioned more about this in this other yes. blog post that we posted that we want to make sure we get a lot of eyeballs on, which is more like 
taking the step towards going from repurposing yourself to having us repurpose for you. So we like yeah. that page to rank possibly. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. All right. So um, I was looking at the site and I see you guys have a video plugin now. And yeah. I am a video person. Obviously, we turn content into video, but I was all about video production and video strategy. And I nerded out really hard when I saw this. Can you walk through what that plugin does and why it's important? Because video is so huge right now that like, I feel like that's super relevant. Yeah, it's, it, it takes care that your, that your uh, video comes in the search results. But I'm not an expert in the video plugin thing. But I, I so I should, I should check it out. I, I can't tell you exactly what it. It's, it's a small part of our, our, our plugin thing. So I know if you have videos, you should have it because it, it allows you to optimize your video and to make sure that your videos pop up in the search results of Google. Yeah. But other than that. <laughs> I think I think I can't answer your question. No, there. that's okay. I saw it in the first place. So I was like, I can't wait to plug that in and to play with it because if it works for me, I tell people to make sure they're embedding video on their site consistently yeah. from YouTube. So if it's something that like I understand how it then makes your page, if if it, what I'm hoping it does is makes your page rank instead of the YouTube video rank, like that would be crazy amazing. And super I don't helpful. know if it does that because we'll YouTube find out. Is a separate <laughs> search engines. Yeah, it used to be a really big plugin it's still used it's still used a lot but video has become much more important and i'm not that good of an expert in youtube as you as well either that's really hard ranking high in youtube yeah. it really is it is yeah. so that's why if there's a way to make it through google <laughs> google and youtube obviously are the same you know people yeah, it's the same. But yeah. so it would be I, i'm excited to give that a whirl and to see how that how that plays a role too because we use video on the site constantly so yeah. i'm excited to check that out um, all right, cool. So how about, let's talk about Yoast University or the Yoast Academy. Yoast Academy. Yeah, yeah that's something I, I started. Cool, yeah. I, I think five years ago already. So we, um, well, I'm, I'm from, from, I have a, a background in education and, um, well, SEO is hard. So you can install the plugin and then, and then what? So if people want to go a little bit further, they should know a little bit on how to just, do that so we um started creating courses and we have all kind of courses so we have the um we have a free course for everybody which is a which is kind of a basic course and then we have courses in copywriting and courses in internal linking keyword research but also in technical uh, seo and structured data so and these are well i think if you really take seo seriously then then such a course because we are they're pretty hard <laughs> so you really have to to make make a make an effort to get through them but afterwards i think you really master the subject so we have some educational specialists that really took care of um making sure that uh, you really learn something from the courses so it's more than just watching videos we also have texts and really challenging questions and um make you making sure that you really um get to practice in what we teach you that's and I'm looking at it right now. I mean, there's a lot of trainings in here. Yes. We've got secure or structured data training, technical SEO, but it starts at the top with just like copywriting and yeah. you know all around SEO training. I mean, who can't benefit from something like that? And the pricing is really good on it too. To yeah. go and get an education from the people who show you how to do SEO, like that's that's awesome. And I'm curious to check out like the structure with your background in education also. So that's that's pretty. I'm sure it's it's thought out really, really well and structured well on the back end too. It is now. It wasn't <laughs> five years ago. No, well, we, we just started and then it was good as well. But now we actually have someone who studied, who was a teacher for a really long time and he took, re he took care of making sure it's, it's like helping people to learn step by step because that's really hard, especially from the screen. And if you, if you are a teacher in front of a classroom, I usually can see which people don't understand me and then I can explain it another time, but you can't do that in an right. online course. You only have one chance and one chance to do it right. So that's really hard. And you hope that what you're saying is translating properly because what's hard sometimes what I found is that you, like the way I can talk about things like repurposing and video and marketing in that sense, like it's like its own language. And so to then try to like make it, you, you think that everybody kind of knows the verbiage and the lingo. So you have to kind of dial it back and speak like you don't know that language when you're educated. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's really hard. But making those videos and making those courses actually made us think, rethink the plugin as well. So we had some, um, some really technical things in our plugin about uh, robots, meta tech, and nobody knew what that, uh, only technical people know who that was. And then I was trying to explain that in our course and I was asking people, what does this mean? And, and they said, that means if you want to want the search engines to know about this page. And I was like, why don't we put that in the question? <laughs> then everybody will understand. So we actually made our own plugin a lot user friendly just by thinking about it from an educational perspective. I have to teach people how to use this, but I don't understand it myself. So yeah. That's really cool that creating an educational course actually made your product more user friendly just yeah. by trying to having to explain it to yourself. Even. Yeah. And then and then people were, I don't know why we didn't say it like that. Because in the early days of our plugin, it were mainly developers using it. And nowadays, it's a really broad audience. But a lot of people who don't have any develop, developmental background, so they don't know all that stuff. Yeah, right. I mean, like, I'm good. I, I grab a theme and then I play with, like, a builder on the back end. But I also have, like, plugins like, yes, I am not a coder. I am not a developer. I can just make things look pretty with somebody else guiding me, basically. So, yeah, yeah for me, I, I would have needed that breakdown. Yeah. You now understand what we're now we also added help buttons and, and question marks for people. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. So just like kind of super simple best practices with SEO. If somebody is like, oh, I've been writing this blog and I'm not ranking, like what are some of your initial really high level tips that you can give them on just trying to rank in general? I think the first thing you need to do is is really think about what you want to rank for. So I think the mistake a lot of people make is that they don't do their keyword research properly. And that's something no tool ever can do for you because you have to know to think about what are the terms I want to rank for and who's my audience. And you should take a little time with that. And then if, if you have those, those, those terms in your head, Google them and see what comes up and does your website fit? And is it expected? that you will ever rank there because if you have a really, if you want to rank for Justin Bieber, <laughs> look, yeah, that's not going to happen because that's a very, very competing term. So with a, with a small block, you'll probably not rank for Justin Bieber. So be realistic in, in what your niche is and maybe you need a little longer a search term like, um, Justin Bieber t-shirts, that's still really hard, but a longer till keyword. And then if you have if done your keyword research right, I think then the, the thing you should ask yourself is which pages do I want to rank with? Because then the internal linking comes in because you can't rank with all of it. And you're probably, probably have a few keywords that you really want to rank for. You can't write like a hundred blog posts with optimize for all these keywords. And a lot of people do that because they think, well, I'll just run another one and then hope that this one will rank. But then you're competing with your own content and Google will, pro will, will not know which one to show. So that's something your internal linking stru structure will also take care of if you make sure that you decide for yourself, I want that um, uh, page to rank and make sure to link towards that one. So, Think about, I always say, think about if you have four or five pages you would like to show to people, which ones would that be? Which ones are you most proud of? Which ones are the ones that maybe people can buy something on because that's what a lot of people want or people can subscribe to your news newsletter on. And then make sure that those pages are going to rank. So aside from Yoast then, let's just talk about keyword research. Are there any tools that you recommend? Obviously you're saying you have to do it yourself, like go yes. through, type in the terms, but is there anything that can assist or is it strictly just check it out and see how oh, it's working for you? I, I always use Google Trends to see, because you can see um, at least for deciding which keyword you want, then you can, can see which has the most search volume. So that helps a little bit. There are some keyword plans like malls has something, but that's rather expensive. Right. And then, so, so for, if you don't have a budget, 
I don't think that we're we're talking about making like a feature for keyword research, but all the features I come up with, with which we can build, are things that I'm afraid that people will not do their keyword research properly, and in the end will not be ranking because they just just filled something in that they they think they, they want to rank for but that isn't really the case so i'm a bit hesitant in keyword research tools you have to google suggest things that will that will help you to come up with more long tail keywords or more lengthy keywords that that helps a little bit but you should never underestimate or skip the step of doing it yourself and talking to your audience and knowing your audience because that's the most important thing i guess Agreed. And that's in all content. Like when you're yeah. writing content, making sure it's speaking to them. Where are you placing your content and how does that message look like? Like if you, if you are in marketing and you don't know your audience, then you may be in the wrong field. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I think so. So our, our, we did the keywords research course. We, we built that, we developed that. And then the first part is just plain marketing because it's all about knowing your audience, knowing, um, what, what they want and what they want to read. So these questions are keyword research is like the basics of marketing, I guess. Yeah. Awesome. We try to make sure that there's some sort of actionable item that people who are listening or watching can implement in the next 48 hours. You've already given like 19. So <laughs> I feel like <laughs> I have to take away and like take an hour to scribble down all the stuff that I need to make sure I'm doing now after our conversation. But outside of the things that we've already talked about, or even maybe reiterating more one or two of the things that we've talked about, what is something that somebody who's listening or watching can implement in the next 48 hours without a team of like 50, you know, themselves or maybe one other person that will help them in their SEO journey, whether they've started, not started, wherever, wherever you think the best use of their time can be? Well, I think a lot of people forget, forget that they wrote articles. So if you're blogging for a long time and then just adding content, but if these articles are never linked to anymore, they're forgotten because Google will not come around very often if they only got like a link from your homepage when you've posted them. So in your SEO, we have the text link counter and you can click on it and then sort it by the number of text links a post has gotten. And then if, a post does, does, did not get any text links, then you never link to it anymore after posting it. You can either <laughs> delete and redirect, always redirect, or think this is a really valuable post, I should link to it more often. So I think cleaning up a bit of your site, especially if you're blogging a long time, is something people tend to forget and they're just adding content. And that's not a bad thing, but if you're not linking to it, at all, then it will never rank. So check out those old blog posts, see if they have any value, or otherwise maybe you should just clean up and redirect them to something you are well ranking with. So I think that's a good tip to start. It's called Orphaned Articles. So in the premium plugin, we have a feature for that. So the you can do it a little bit more easier, but also in the in the in the in the free version, you can also use the text encounter. Yeah, it's in, our, in, the, in, the, in the post overview. If you installed your SEO, it will be on the right hand in your post overview. <laughs> so first thing, download and install the Yoast plugin. Yes. Second thing, awesome. go and clean up all of your existing stuff and see yes. what's relevant and what is it. That's an awesome, see, and anybody can do that. That's what I like to hear. Yes. Awesome. You should recondo your website. You should think, does this spark me joy? Because <laughs> if it doesn't spark joy, maybe it should just be redirected. Yeah. yeah, I think this is something that will come up more and more because we're all having websites for like 10 years now and everybody is afraid to, to throw away stuff, but it becomes like an enormous website and then you're probably competing with yourself because you're writing about similar topics and that's not a good thing. So you should clean up every now and then. And if it doesn't spark joy, I think that should apply in life in general. So yes. I love that. Yeah. If it doesn't spark joy, you should redirect it. <laughs> I'm going to put that on my, on my whiteboard here just so I can look at that every day. <laughs> because you shouldn't throw it away because no. you never throw anything away. Just redirect. 
There's three directives. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for spending time. I know you're in the Netherlands and in a completely different time zone. And I really, really appreciate it. This was super awesome and a lot of fun. And I learned a ton. So hopefully everybody else did too. Um, so if people want to see what you're doing and what Yoast is up to, where can they find you guys? I think uh, our website, so yoast.com is the best thing. You can also follow us on Twitter, Facebook, or everywhere. Everywhere, yeah. Not on chat, I don't know why. Perfect. <laughs> and go check out the academy. There's some really, really yes. cool courses over there yeah. too, for sure. Yeah, a free course to start with. Yeah. Done. Done. Yeah. See, there's your there's your second thing to implement, the free Yoast course. Do, do yes. it. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Have an awesome rest of your night. And thank you everybody for watching and listening. And we will talk to you guys next week. Thank you so much for checking out this episode of the Content Coalition. Now, whether you're listening or watching, make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel and to whatever platform you're listening to it on, because you're not going to want to miss out on the incredible things that I'm learning with these amazing content marketing pros. So make sure you subscribe and we will talk to you next week.